what's going on guys KJ here man if you haven't watched this Pokemon Direct you need to it gave us some awesome stuff I mean while I wasn't able to actually see the direct myself for the first time I did watch it uh, recently before I started making this script so I saw all the trailers for the stuff that we were getting and the link will be in the description below so definitely check it out you know if you weren't able to get a look at the trailer or maybe you want to get another look it's in, down, it's in the description please just Hey, don't hesitate. But let's get right into my thoughts on today's Pokemon Direct. I'm really sorry I couldn't do a reaction. It came on at 10 a.m. Of course, I'm still 17. I'm graduating uh, high school. This is actually my last week of school and doing my finals and stuff. I was obviously in school, so what is a, what is a, a YouTuber who's in high school to do? And if I had done a reaction, it kind of, I mean, I've already, I already know so much of what happened that it just wouldn't have been legitimate. So I want to stay real. But anyway... The first new title we got was a sequel to Pokken Tournament, as well as a port to the Nintendo Switch Pokken Tournament Deluxe or DX. Although I've only played the original Pokken like probably two times, I do like the game and I can't wait for the new one to come out. The release date is September 22nd, 2017, which is pretty good. I like that Nintendo is sort of distancing the release dates for their titles as it gives us consumers, you know, time to buy each game, play it, and then have time to save up for the next one. And it's being ported to the Switch as stated before, so here's another great game that will now be portable. You know, Mario Kart 8, that's now portable. I mean, you can say, oh, Mario Kart 7, Mario Kart DS, yes, but those are 3DS versions. Those are essentially watered down versions. They don't have everything that a console game would have you know what i'm saying and now we're going to be able to take that on the go as well pokin tournament an amazing game we're not going to be able to play it on the go instead of having to lug around a wii u and have to connect it to a tv so definitely something to look forward to um but from what i saw in the video we got some new additions to pokin as well as the return of the old characters as well the new characters include krogunk dark rye scissor empoleon and decidueye New features for Pokemon Tournament uh, DX include 3v3, 3v3 team battles, online rank play, and friends only group matches as well as um, just friends casual matches as well. The 3v3 format kind of reminds me of you know King of Fighters, another game for the Switch because there's King of Fighters 94, 98, and 99. I currently have 98 and I possibly will be getting 99 soon. But pretty much it's a two player game just as Pokemon is I think pretty sure. And you can choose three characters, and once the first character dies, you can uh, play as you, you sort of swap out that character, and then you you know restart the round with the next character. And then the character who won the match keeps the same amount of health, or depending on how fast they defeated the previous character, they actually get some health back. So it would be uh, it would kind of cool to see some of that come to uh, Pokemon. Um, but back to the new characters, I'm really do I'm no, 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 I'm really hoping that they add others as well. You know, some Pokemon I choose. Huh, you see what I did there? But uh, yeah, no. Let's get right back into it. Um, some Pokemon I choose would be all the, the all the other starters, and I mean every single one fully evolved. Maybe you know, give or take some. Some would probably be given priority, especially the um, biped ones. You know, but um, Hitmonlee. Hitmonchan, maybe Hitmontop, I don't know, maybe. Sock and Throw, now that would be, actually be really cool. Uh, Tangrowth, Gallade, um, Primeape, Toxicroak, and I don't understand why they would add Krogunk and not Toxicroak. Um, Hariyama and Pangoro, just to name a few. Honestly, a game like Pokken should have a medium size to large selection of characters as the list could go on for potential additions in the game. Um, another good idea if there was, is if there was a game mode that allowed you to play in Mega Evolution form the entire match. Um, the other I, the, another idea that I had was uh, if they had like a story mode similar to the regular Pokemon games, but it used the Pokemon style of fighting instead of normal battling. So perhaps you could catch Pokemon, uh, evolve Pokemon, challenge gym leaders, the Elite Four, and even the champion in a whole new region. Or maybe you can pick the region you want to explore, and then when you're done with that, you can explore a new one. Um, well, explore another one, like another known one that we have. You'd also be able to trade with other people who had Pokemon, of course. But it wouldn't be on the same level as a normal Pokemon game. Maybe some of the same mechanics, but watered down, of course, because it's not an actual Pokemon game. Adding a pseudo Pokemon game like story to Pokemon could give us, you know, more reasons to play it when we're not playing against other people. Because in a traditional fighting game, if there's not a lot of add ons or things you can do outside of comp um, competitive games or, com or the co competitive side of it, you're really not going to want to play it. Like, I recently got Street Fighter 2, and once you beat arcade mode with all the characters, there's only about like 19. 
you literally have nothing else to do besides play online with people or play with friends. But what happens if you can't go online and you don't have anyone who wants to play with you? Then what? You have to play another game. So, uh, you know, but to conclude my thoughts on Pokemon Tournament DX, I'm definitely looking forward to buying and playing this game and seeing what other things it has to offer. But with my thoughts of Pokemon Tournament DX finished, let's get right into the other important title we got from this reveal trailer, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Oh, shoot, I'm about to sneeze. All right. I would say the only con I could get out of it was that it wasn't a lot of footage for the game. However, I do believe we'll possibly be getting more at E3. Now, as far as Ultra Sun and Moon go, the legendaries are probably just fusions between Solgaleo and, and Necrozma, as well as Lunala and Necrozma. I was actually thinking we could get a remake for Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, or see the Nintendo Switch get its first Pokemon title, but sadly, it was neither. Although Pokemon will technically be the first Pokemon title for the Switch, it doesn't really classify along with the other core Pokemon games. It's more of like a spin-off kind of thing. Um, it also is unfortunate that the Switch won't get Ultra Sun and Moon as well. It was actually said to get Sun and Moon on one of the sites, but they took it down because, you know, it's for 3DS only, you know. But, uh, I can, but I can also sort of understand why Nintendo would go in that direction, you know. The 3DS systems aren't dead yet, plus we're getting a new addition to the 3DS, uh, th the, bleh, we're getting a new addition to the 3DS family in July. So it wouldn't make sense to have a new Pokemon game come to the Switch if the 3DS is still alive and kick kicking. However, once the 3DS has become fully obsolete, you know, discontinued, they don't make anymore, then that would probably be the right time that we'd see the next Pokemon game or a new Pokemon game come to the Switch. But back to Ultra Sun and Moon, it's most likely a sequel to Sun and Moon, sort of like Black 2 and White 2. They are very similar if you actually think about it. You get two main legendaries in the first game, plus the third legendary who's, who, bleh, who's shrouded in mystery because we don't know if Necrozma is an Ultra Beast or not. And then you get the sequel of the first games where the third legendary fuses with each of the first two legendaries. So this could possibly mean that there could be a time skip between Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon. Maybe it could be two years like uh, between Black and White and Black 2 and White 2, or maybe it could be more, maybe it could be less. There are some things that I believe should be added to Ultra Sun and Moon as improvements from Sun and Moon. First off, please bring gyms back. I understand that the whole concept of an island challenge can really work well with Alola because it's a tropical island. However, there are four islands. So just put two gyms on each. You get eight and then you can have the elite four and champion either a whole nother island or you can actually put it on one of the four islands, kind of like they did in Sun and Moon. You know, the island challenge certainly didn't take away from Sun and Moon. It was definitely a great uh, a, a mechanic or thing to do in the game. However, it was such a big change. You know, a lot of people weren't ready for it. A lot of people didn't like it. I thought it was iffy, you know, it was okay. And it was just too easy because I caught so many Pokemon that were Pokemon that my Pokemon were over leveled, so I could literally like two shot the totem Pokemon. So it wasn't that hard. Um, another thing they should add to Ultra Sun and Moon is the Dex Nav. If you remember the Dex Nav in uh, Omega Ruby now Sapphire or 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 or, 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 or as helped. Well, it, it definitely helped me a lot because it allowed me to see how many Pokemon were on the route as well as if I completed it or not. And another thing they could add is if, like, at the end of the game, like, Pokemon from other regions come on that route, sort of like a special kind of thing, and then if they had the Dex Nav, they could be like, all right, well, this route isn't completed, there's a whole new Pokemon, and then they have the Cry, and then you can go and actually catch the Pokemon, uh, and try to find it on the route. That would actually be really interesting. Um, and, like I said, and, and also, not like I said before, but... And the Dex Nav would actually be improved even more if it was combined with the Rotom Dex. So maybe they could give the Rotom Dex an actual voice to tell you about the various things and other features that we got on the Dex Nav, like news, and maybe they could bring back secret bases. Maybe they could, you know, everything that they had in the Dex Nav, they put it on, they combine it with the Rotom Dex, and they also give the Rotom Dex a voice, and you can actually hear it. Maybe not, don't make it too loud, but like if you have the game's volume up or if you have headphones in, you should be able to hear it fine. Another thing that they could add could be super training. Although we have hyper training, it's really more of a shortcut if you think about it, and you're just giving a guy bottle caps to increase your Pokemon stats. Super training was a lot more interesting, you know what I'm saying? Um, the starters are the same, which is good. It looks like the player, the player character's house for Ultra Sun and Moon is or is near the same house of the player character in Sun and Moon. So that could either mean that the player character of Ultra Sun and Moon is the same character from Sun and Moon, the player character lives near the Sun and Moon player character, or the player character is a possible relative or descendant of the Sun and Moon player character. Because the area does look similar, I mean, well, it's because the area does look similar. 
However, it has changed. You know, if you remember that like large route, I think it was like route two or route three, that long straightaway, and then you hit hit some grass and you hit some Pokemon trainers right before you get to um, Iki Town or whatever it's called. Uh, it didn't have that much decoration in Sun and Moon. So, but um, the player character also has a Nintendo Switch, which is pretty uh, cool cool to see. Customization of the character is also most likely returning as well. And just to go over what we got in the video, then we see an area inhabited by many Pikachu, or Pikachus, whatever you want to call it. Maybe it could be a conservation reserve. You know, the Pikachu species might have become scarce on the islands of Alola between the time of Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon, so maybe they were rounded up and put on a reserve to get the Pikachu population back up. Then we see the Togemaru upset at something. Maybe it's a recurring Pokemon we will see and possibly interact with the story. Then we see Mimikyu doing a strange move. Now this could possibly be a special Z move for Mimikyu, or maybe just Mimikyu is showing us what's under its skies. Finally, we get to know. Um, and then we see the legendaries, which I will would nickname Prism Solgaleo and Prism Lunala because it um, Necrozma is associated with prisms, like light prisms and stuff. Uh, for the time being, I'm going to nickname them though. Uh, those I'm going to give them those nicknames. Now, what made these Pokemon fuse? Maybe it's the work of something related to the DNA splicers we got back in Black 2 and White 2, or it could have been done by the evil team in Ultra Sun and Moon, if there is one. Maybe it was just a natural fusion, you know? But for Team Skull, it was disbanded by Guzma, and some of its members are now on a rescue team called Team Reskull, if you remember the ending of Sun and Moon. So maybe there's a new evil team, or someone we know, or a new character, might have taken the mantle as the new leader of Team Skull, or even the Aether Foundation. Um, maybe there are different factions of these teams like Black and White 2 with uh, Team Plasma. You know, like you have Team Reskull who likes to rescue Pokemon and the new Aether Foundation who likes to do the same thing. So it's kind of like they're all working together. And then you have the evil team, possibly a evil or flat faction of the Aether Foundation or Team Skull or even a new team. And they are really, really evil and they want to get rid of both of those teams. So, you know, one team helps you and the other team hurts you. Who knows? And then we see the player character turning, turning, actually like turning the Z move crystal. So it was kind of like like that, you know what I'm saying? Um, maybe it could be a special Z move for a certain uh, for a certain Pokemon, or it could be maybe a cross between Mega Evolution and Z moves. We also got the release date for Ultra Sun and Moon, uh, November 17th, which is really good because it gives us some time between Pokemon Tournament DX and Ultra Sun and Moon. If you remember, Sun and Moon came out on November 18th. So the release dates of both Pokemon games are very, very close. Maybe the release date of Ultra Sun and Moon being the day before the release date of Sun and Moon could mean something. Now, I'm about to get into a really weird theory here, so hold on to your hats. I think that possibly there's a chance that Ultra Sun and Moon could take place before Sun and Moon because of the release date being before the... The, the release date of Ultra Sun and Moon being the 17th and the release date of Sun and Moon was the 18th, so... Maybe Solaleo and Lunala were both fused with Necrozma in the, in, in, uh, in the past, but split up. Ultra Sun and Moon would allow you to catch them fused, while Sun and Moon allows you to get them, but separately. Maybe the, cano uh, the canonical story is that the player character from Ultra Sun and Moon caught the fusion of Solgaleo slash Lunala and Necrozma, split them up, and released them. Then Solgaleo slash Lunala de-evolved back into Cosmog, and Necrozma went into hiding until someone worthy could catch it. And that's where the, sun um, and that's where the story from Sun and Moon starts. Uh, but this is definitely a wild little theory, or I could just be making a mountain out of a molehill. I don't know. Um, the last thing that the Pokemon Direct showed us is that they're bringing Pokemon Gold and Silver to the 3DS. You know, while I'm not a huge fan of the old Pokemon games, this is really cool, and it's definitely something to look forward to if you know if you're an older Pokemon player, a player who's checked out these games in general, or someone who's willing to give them a try. Gold and Silver come out on the same day as Pokemon Tournament uh, DX, September 22nd. I won't be buying these two, but I'll because I'll def probably be buying Pokemon Turn um, po Pokemon oh Pokemon Tournament DX. However, they are great games nonetheless. I mean. I think the only time I'd really get the virtual console games is when they release Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald on the um, 3DS, you know what I'm saying? But until then, no, probably not. Um, yeah, because they got Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and then then they if they do that, maybe around the time they do Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald for 3DS, they could possibly do a remake of Diamond Pearl Platinum, you know what I'm saying? That could actually be really cool. Um, but overall, I mean, I'm not overall, but uh, anyway, Thanks for checking out my thoughts on the Pokemon Direct of June 6, 2017, or today, of course. Although this was a very short Direct, it definitely packed a lot for us into 8 minutes.
I'm really hoping we get more info for these games at E3, so look out for any future videos of mine discussing Nintendo-related news, um, or anything at all that we get at E3. Well, not anything at all, but, like, Nintendo-related news, actually, or Nintendo anything that we get at E3 or other announcements. Um, I'm definitely getting Pokémon Tournament DX, as I never got Pokémon Tournament for the Wii U, and obviously I'll be getting Ultra Sun and Moon as well, as they are the next Pokémon games. However, will you be getting Pokémon Tournament DX or Ultra Sun and Moon, or even Gold and Silver? What are your thoughts on this Ultra Sun and Moon little quick theory of mine? And um, with all that being said, until next time, I'll see y'all later.